Let's talk to about that. To uh, Dr. Kishan Rees uh, joins me now, and uh, very good to talk to you, Dr. Rees. Um, we'll just tell us um, what may be happening in in terms of what you know about the way COVID-19 patients who who develop the severe symptoms, as clearly the Prime Minister has, how they are treated short of ventilation when they when they end up, unfortunately, in an intensive care unit. Sure, Dermot. So. I think it's really important to get some messages across to your viewers in terms of this is a serious disease. And to be quite honest, I don't know how much more has to happen for your viewers to really, or some of your viewers, I should say, the vast majority of people are taking this very, very seriously. But there's still a few that remain to be convinced that if the prime minister is on an intensive care unit, albeit not ventilated, uh, which is obviously reassuring, um, but I think it, it's really important that members of the public take this incredibly seriously, which we're starting to see now. In answer to your question, what sort of things will they do? Um, well, judging by your reporting and uh, Beth Rigby's piece where she was talking about how he gave the instruction to Dominic Raab, um, it does sound like he hasn't been intubated. And you'll have to bear with me because this is obviously I've just been phoned 10 minutes ago by your producer. Um, so it sounds like he hasn't been intubated, which is obviously a good thing. Um, and we wish him well. Um, but I think he will be on an intensive care unit because that allows for a far higher degree of monitoring um, in terms of the body's physiology. And there's also one-to-one -one nursing. There's a very uh, close eye from a medical point of view. And they can really monitor his observations, so his temperature, his blood pressure, his heart rate, his oxygen sat. And Dr. Rees, I mean, it's it's terrifying, isn't it? And you, you make that very, very good point that uh, this really is, well, the most high profile warning that the nation can get just about how dangerous this is. And, you know, we saw the prime minister, he sent a message from Downing Street where he was in self-isolation. He said he still had that uh, that high temperature. No evidence of the shortness of breath of the of the coughing. He's had it for about seven days. It's just how quickly this can turn nasty. Absolutely, Demo. And the, the really scary thing with this is there's a balancing act, right, in terms of we don't want to scare members of the public and we don't want them to panic because there is the balancing between physical health and mental health. But as you rightly said, uh, this disease affects people in very different ways. Some people can be completely asymptomatic, have no symptoms whatsoever, don't even know that they've got it, but can still be very contagious. And that's why it's a bit of a problem. Um, but then the, the disease seems to follow two courses. So some people have a, um, a situation where they have this mild flu-like illness for five to seven days, and then they get completely better. However, other people, and there are the at-risk categories, so patients that have diabetes, chronic kidney disease, um, various other complex medical problems, which obviously, as far as I'm aware, uh, the prime minister isn't, doesn't fall into those categories, right? But this should serve as even more of a warning shot for your, pay, uh, for your viewers in the sense that the, the second stage of this disease in, in the, some people that get it um, can involve a really, really severe autoimmune reaction, something called cytokine storm, which basically the body's natural defenses are overwhelmed um, and the body shuts down with multi-organ failure. So I, I want to reassure your viewers that from what the news that's coming out at the moment, as far as we can tell, that is certainly not the case for the Prime Minister. Um, but it, it is a powerful warning to how seriously members of the public really must take this. And I think there's a there's an element of distrust in some elements of the media. Um, and there's a, the, the, you know, this era of fake news and nobody really wants to believe this. I've been tracking this since it started in December in Wuhan. And I've spoken to colleagues around the world, and, and this trail of destruction and, sadly, death has, has swept around the globe. So members of the public really, really, really need to stay at home, protect the NHS, and ultimately save lives. And if the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, on an intensive care unit, albeit for monitoring at the moment, isn't that powerful warning shot to your viewers, then I, I honestly, I'm lost for words as to what is. Yeah, I've got to totally agree with you there, Dr Rees. Just tell us... Um... About treatment regimes, though, now, and not referring to the Prime Minister, but oh, when oh. a patient suffering severely from COVID-19, and it's interesting what you say there about the cytokine storm, presumably then or before then, this is where some powerful antibiotics perhaps come into play? Well, interestingly, it depends on what happens, right? So if this is... We know that coronavirus causes COVID-19, so coronavirus is the virus and COVID-19 is the disease. Now, 
ultimately, you can get super added bacterial infections or bacterial pneumonias. And that super added means on top of, which means therefore an antibiotic would help. However, in the vast majority of cases, uh, antibiotics are of no use at all. So a really important public health message to your viewers is, you know, don't go to, well, you shouldn't go to your GP anyway at the current situation, but don't demand a situation where you uh, be in a situation where you're demanding antibiotics because antibiotics won't actually help you. Um, prevention is obviously better than cure, but always with all disease. Um, and so that is why the hand washing is incredibly important. Uh, not that I'm criticising, but my concern with the, the, the public health messaging that has been put out is that the severity and the gravity of this situation seems to have been lost among some. Um, and that's why it is spreading around the UK population. And that's why we're seeing businesses around the country taking major measures to try and keep not only their staff safe, um, but the, the shoppers going to get essential supplies and things. So Going back to your question, antibiotics, no, not going to help unless there's a super added bacterial infection. To be honest, the treatment is very much supportive, which means fluids, um, which means uh, maybe paracetamol to con con control fever. But also, if patients' cases do deteriorate to the point where they're no longer able to maintain their blood pressure, um, then they could end up on an intensive care unit and they would be getting inotropic support. So inotropic support, and I'm really grateful to Sky News giving airtime to this because I think it's really important that members of the public understand all these discussions that may be happening if they or a loved one end up in hospital, right? So inotropes is when your body cannot maintain a blood pressure anymore because your body is getting to the point where it's failing. Inotropic support is basically a powerful vasoconstrictor, which means all the blood vessels constrict um, and adrenaline is example, noradrenaline is another one. And by all your blood vessels in your body constricting, what it does is it diverts blood to the vital organs, i.e. your brain, uh, your heart and your kidneys, which is the, the, the vital organs that we absolutely have to protect. So there is no treatment. That's another reason why this disease is, is incredibly scary and needs to be taken incredibly seriously. Um, and if you end up on ITU, then your body's physiology is not in a position where it can compensate, 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 which it does in the vast majority of healthy people. And Dr. Reese, we, we thank you for that, and in particular hammering home that all-important message. I just want to ask you, I'm sure people are wondering a little bit about you and your experience during this pandemic. Where have you been working? What have you seen? Sure. So, so I work full time in the pharmaceutical industry and I'm not able to comment. I'm speaking on Sky in my personal capacity as an urgent care doctor and my interest with WhatMed Media, uh, which is a social media broadcaster. But, you know, I have been tracking it. And one of the reasons that I'm not on the front line is I actually have an autoimmune condition, um, which would place me in a high risk group. And ultimately, I'm not willing to, to chance it in terms of going on the front line without appropriate PPE. I saw you guys did a great segment with Rinesh Palmer on uh, Sophie Ridge on Sunday where the, you were shedding light on that vital issue where, yes, there's been supply issues with PPE, um, but we also are getting doctors on the front line are getting in contact with the Doctors Association, who's their organisation. They're getting in touch with WhatMed Media, and we get proper reports on the front line that there's not PPE. So at the moment, um, I work in a private urgent care centre in London, and they took the decision to close on the 15th of March. And if I'm being completely honest with you, there was a little uh, relief in me in the sense that once I'd committed to the shifts, I was always going to do them and I wasn't not going to do them because to me, being a doctor is sticking to your word and doing it. But with my own health condition, the autoimmune disease, I, I am at high risk of developing that cytokine storm that we, we talked about. So not on the front line currently, um, but working in the pharmaceutical industry, tracking this disease uh, from December, uh, coming out of Wuhan. So I've certainly read up on the literature about it. But perhaps more importantly, um, I'm really trying hard to communicate that science to patients in a way that they can understand. And that's not trying to be condescending, um, I, but I see some of the science being communicated in a really, really shoddy way, to be honest. Well, Dr. Reese, thank you very, very much indeed. Right, and yeah. thank you for doing what you can to spread awareness of this deadly disease. Uh, Dr. Kishan Reese there, and let's just bring you up to speed if you have just joined us.